Uh, hi everyone, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, I'm Millie Marcoux. Um, I am a senior at Daniel Hens High School. Uh, I know I'm a bit young, but uh, I think that um, we are a diverse committee, which brings a lot of um, diverse opinions and a really good perspective. So um, if everyone could introduce themselves. My name is Alicia Dunbar. I'm the first grade teacher at Jeffrey. Hi, Becky Frost. I'm the current principal at Jeffrey School. Craig Cook, superintendent. I'm a non-voting member of the committee. Deb Thomas. I'm a sixth grade teacher at Folsom Middle School. Kathy Miller. I'm a board member. Seth Claskin. I'm a board member, uh, the board chair, and a uh, an ex officio non-voting member of this uh, naming committee. Thank you. Um, all right, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Ms. Bruce. Good evening, everybody. I'm just going to go over a couple of rules of how this evening is going to go. So we're going to run this kind of the way we do any sort of public input at the board level. Each person is given three minutes to speak. If you're here in person, I ask that you step up to the podium. Mr. Becker has beat you to be first in line. Um, <laughs> so please introduce yourself, give your address. And then we're capping everyone at three minutes just so everyone gets a chance to speak. If you're joining us via Zoom, please use the raise your hand function on Zoom and I'll promote you to speak. We'll bounce back and forth between in person and those who are joining us virtually. Um, this evening, we we do have to stop by 6.15 as we do have some other committee meetings this evening, but I'm hoping we'll have a chance to get through everyone. If for some reason we don't, there are certainly more meetings coming up later this week and then in January and then finally in February when the Board of Education will officially vote on an aid. So there'll be plenty of more opportunities for everyone to speak. You're also welcome to keep using the um, New School Naming Committee email address, which people have been using a lot. I have over 250 emails on that, which is great. So there's plenty of different ways to do this. And so then with that, I will get us started. Uh, Mr. Claskin, then we kind of keep an eye on the time for three minutes in case you don't want to have to time yourself. So if he starts waving at you, that means he kind of, we've hit the limit there. So we'll ask you to wrap up. And with that, we will get going. Awesome. Mr. Becker. Uh, Eric Becker, teacher, head football coach at hand, 657 Durham Road. I got my timer here. Um, I am here in hearty support of Taffy Bowes Elementary. Taffy is an incredibly vibrant, intelligent, caring hilarious woman who has radiated her light on the young people of Madison Public Schools for over 43 years. Her education or over-education, as she says, Georgetown University, Quinnipiac, Goddard College, Yale Divinity School. Uh, her employment at Madison Public School started in 1980. She was a homebound tutor. She was a teacher at Academy. Uh, she taught at Yale Divinity School. Uh, but she, her role of most prominence with our town was as Dave Melillo's first hire at Madison Youth and Family Services. She retired in 2015 as assistant director in charge of prevention uh, and is still doing great work at Grove School. Um, Life-changing programs created by and run, facilitated by Taffy Bowes. Peer Advocates, flagship program of Madison Youth Family, a life-changing 15-week program designed to build self-awareness, empathy, and communication skills. Uh, over 2,000 kids trained. Peer Advocate alumni meeting, bi-weekly, I'm sorry, bi-monthly meetings, uh, Peer Advocate retreat program, two weekend retreats a year for 10 years, uh, Peer Helpers, a middle school version of, with a focus on promoting healthy choices, Safe Rides, uh, high school kids giving other high school kids Safe Rides home on Friday and Saturday nights, spinoff groups, Safe Rides core group, Safe Rides food drive, GASP, originally the Gay and Straight Persons Alliance, uh, has had many names over the years, uh, a safe space for LGBTQ kids. Uh, we observe the day of silence at the high school and they speak at True Colors Conference. Reach Out, a peer advocate alumni program, welcoming new students to Daniel Hand. Healthy Friendship Program, uh, presented to fifth grade students at Jeffrey and Academy. Uh, the award plaque is in Madison Family. Uh, choices, substance-free hand students, speaking in middle school health classes about the dangers of drug and alcohol abuse. I got one minute left. Night in Hand, the safe, substance-free space to celebrate graduation night. Mentoring, a peer advocate alumni program, pairing trained peer advocates from Hand with younger 
Madison Public School students. Teen Life Day, the hand high school day devoted to the mental, emotional, and physical wellness of kids. Women of the World, an empowering program for female students. Uh, they did supply drives for Safe House in New Haven and a broad drive for women in African countries. Men Who Cook, an opportunity for guys from hand to cook and serve food for a good cause. Arms, the Alliance of Racial Minority Students, Perspective, Interfaith and Interracial Discussion Group to address their concerns for hate speech presented at middle school classes. True Colors Conference, which is a statewide LGBTQ uh, conference. Abuse and Control in Teen Relationships uh, presented uh, to juniors uh, at Daniel Hand. Violence Reduction Prevention Program. I got five seconds left. Um, uh, her loving heart and bright mind and joyful spirit changed the lives of thousands of Madison Public School students. She's still shining her light at 79, and she's most deserving. Thanks for your time. If you're planning to speak, you're welcome to line up there this evening. It's just going to be public comment tonight, so after you speak, we'd love to have you stay, but you are welcome to go home. You don't have to stay for the whole meeting, and we'll just keep rolling through like this. Go ahead. Good evening. My name is Cecily Barron. I live at 93 Devonshire Lane. Um, as we consider our new school, I urge the committee and the board to choose a name that brings honor to our community and is meaningful to the majority of our citizens, and especially the children who attend our schools. With this in mind, I particularly support two of the nominees, the first of which is Hammonasset Elementary School. I like the idea of honoring the people who are faithful stewards of this land on which the school will be built. Indigenous people have largely been overlooked for their contributions and for such honors. Naming our new school Hammonasset would highlight the role and the importance of the tribe to our history. It would provide an ongoing invitation to our children to explore this legacy and to discover and learn from their wisdom, especially their practices to preserve our ecosystem, which is among the most imperative topics for our children today. If we are to name this school after an individual person, I strongly encourage and echo Mr. Becker's comments, uh, urge the committee to choose Taffy Bowes. Throughout her long years of service to Madison, Taffy promoted models of listening and constructive problem solving that helped individuals and families navigate their personal struggles. The practices and organizations she developed built bridges between people and strengthened the surrounding community. Her methods are now integral to our town, providing a foundation for teaching kindness and for creating strong, contributing, involved citizens. Throughout through her programs, Taffy continues to inspire the best in all of us, even now, many years after her retirement. I can't imagine anyone with a more profound, pervasive, and ongoing impact on maps than Taffy. And I can think of no person more deserving of this school naming honor than her. On the other hand, respectfully, there are some no uh, several nominations that I encourage the committee to eliminate. Two of these are Robert Hale and Noreen Kokoruto. Undoubtedly, both Bob and Noreen gave many, many years of dedicated service to our town. And many people believe they did a good job However, simply by virtue of being elected officials, there is likely a significant number of people who would disagree with that statement. As such, I encourage the committee to eliminate those names from consideration. I also encourage the committee and board to limit the, eliminate the name James Madison, but simply he was an enslaver. To name our new school after such a person, I would consider shameful to our town. In conclusion, I encourage the board and committee to pick a name that has positive meaning for most townspeople and ongoing relevance for our school children. I believe Cam Nassif Elementary School and Tappy Bowes Elementary School are names which most closely meet these criteria. So thank you for the opportunity to speak for your consideration of this viewpoint and uh, for serving that. What? Thank Good evening, my name is Mike Skinechny. Uh, I live at 61 Milano Pond Drive. 
here in Madison. I'm a longtime resident of the town. Uh, I've been growing up in the town and graduated from Daniel Hand in 1990. I moved back in 2009, and I'm proud to say all three of my children have been part of the Madison Public School uh, system. Um, it's very exciting to be here to share my strong support the name of the new school, the Taffy Bowes Elementary School. Having grown up in town, I've known Taffy and the Bowes family for over 40 years. She has a deep and long history serving our schools and Madison Youth and Family Services. Um, I'm going to echo a lot of what Coach Becker has already said, but in 1982, she was a fourth grade teacher at Academy Elementary School. And from 1988 to 2015, she held a variety of roles at Madison Youth and Family Services, where she retired as assistant director in charge of prevention programs. During her time at Madison, Madison Youth and Family Services, she created and led a range of programs that had a significant impact on kids in our town. They include the Peer Advocates Program, where 1,800 kids were trained during her time at MYFS. She also led the Safe Rides Program, which I'm an alumnus of the Safe Rides Program which recruited and trained eligible students to provide safe rides home on Friday and Saturday nights. Um, other programs, it's, it's a huge laundry list of programs that she created, led, uh, Women of the World, Healthy Friendships Program, the Gender and Sexualities Program, the Alliance of Racial Minority Students, Perspectives, Abuse and Control and Teen Relationships and Girl Talk, and the AIDS Awareness Program uh, Project. Most importantly, Taffy's dedication work over literally decades has had an immeasurable impact on the education, health, and well-being of the youth of Madison. And I have no doubt there will be many students across many years and decades that would tell you what a difference she has made in their life. Thank you for your time. Hello everyone, I'm Art Simons. I live at 65 Bartlett Drive in Madison. Um, I've lived in Madison two different stints for 38 years, chose to retire here. Um, I've I to every grade, went to every grade of school in Madison, except it was in the last century. So it was a while back, but as a result of that, I know several of the applicants particularly, or nominees particularly well. Um, the first thing I would like to say, is that um, I'd like to see you name it after an individual. That is a long-standing tradition, Madison, to name our schools after an individual, which I think has um, stood the test of time and been a good thing that you've done. The um, I think that, uh, that that's my number one thing, is name it after an individual. Um, there's several very good individuals to choose from that I know, in partic know particularly well. Um, I know Taffy a little bit because I was on the Youth Services Board and can't say anything but positive things about her. I actually know uh, three other applicants better um, my long time living in Madison. Um, the three I know the best are Warner Lord, because he was a fifth grade teacher when I was going to what was then called Cops Road School which obviously probably not too many people in here know was once called Jeffrey School, it was once called Capturing School. Um, Noreen Tokaruda and Bob Hale. Those are those are the my those would be definitely my three top. I don't envy you guys having to do this. This is not an easy choice. And you're sure, whatever whoever you choose, you're sure to make some enemies somewhere um, in this process. It's just kind of inevitable. Um, so those those are the ones that I, I think are the best choices of the list that I've seen of the, of the individuals I know, I think all but one of them, but those are the three that I know the best, um, my uh, 10 years in Madison. Um, my number one support, however, is for Bob Hale. Um, the reason for this is, so, there's several reasons. One, because he had a career in public education, which I think is important. He's not unique in that among the nominees. Uh, mostly in, in Brantford. After that, he worked with the State Department of Education and the Educational Technology Department and, and achieved a very high level position in that. I'm sure his work in that department influenced Madison students um, as well as the uh, 
20 years that he served on the Board of Education, which is probably the thing I think is the most unique uh, about Bob Hale compared to the other applicants. Again, I have nothing but positive things to say about the other people I've mentioned. Um, you have a plethora of great choices to choose from. Uh, Bob served 20 years on the Board of Education, just about, uh, 10 of which he served as chair. I think during the years that he served as uh, chair of the Board of Ed Education in particular, uh, in the 80s and 90s, I guess going into the 21st century also, that um, Madison schools really improved during those years that he was on the Board of Education. I think that uh, as a, I'm a retired teacher, so I, I understand the influence the Board of Education can have on teachers, positive or negatively, and his influence is all positive. Um, in terms of, as far as I'm concerned, he always did what we thought was best for the students, which I'm sure is not unique in that, but I think that, that should be mentioned. Or, I'm sorry, if you just wrap up. Oh, oh sure. Thank you. Um, yep, he also served on the Board of Selectmen, and I'd just like to say he's the, as far as I'm concerned, he's a consummate community volunteers. Volunteer, you can read more in his uh, wife's letter about the various things he did, which I don't have time to get into. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Terry Duffy. I live at 133 between Coke Road, Madison, Connecticut. Um, my family goes way back to the 1800s, having been a shipbuilder here in Madison. Also, uh, family owned the Crescent Motel originally. Um, we've had summer residents here up until 19. 76 when I moved back here and I've been living here ever since. I went to school at Island Avenue. Warner Ward was my principal for fourth and half of fifth grade. I'm a military brat, so I moved around a lot and then returned my senior year of high school to Daniel Hand High School. Warner Ward is the only principal that I can remember. That in itself says a lot. And at 17, graduating from Daniel Hand High School, and I can't remember the principal. That says a lot. Um, I'm a little disgruntled at this, which was from the source. Um, this past week, naming all of the recipients that are out there, but also the fact that only two photos were listed here with all of their background information and not the other 13. That's pathetic. Warner has done so much for this for this town. I'm a volunteer at CLEMA myself, the Charlotte Evers Memorial Archives. I know Nancy Bastian, our archivist, sent you paperwork about this thick on everything that Warner has done for this town and continues to do, even though he has left the town and lives up in Maine. He is still sending information to us on a weekly to monthly basis on information that he still has up in his head from all the years of living here. So I'm sorry, there's no other person that I can think of that I would want to represent a new high school or a new elementary school than one award. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good evening. Uh, my name is Bill Cronin. I'm here with my wife, Donna. Uh, who has an education background. Uh, we're familiar with a lot of the people even on this committee. And um, I'm here to nominate um, uh, for this elementary school, Noreen Kokoruda. And the reason I'm, uh, I'm <clears throat> taking my time to do this is because it's an expression of the 40 plus years that she's dedicated herself to what she considered to be the best place in the world to raise her family, to govern, and to participate in the things that were wonderful, which for her was Madison. Now, um, <clears throat> few citizens in our community, we've been here, we haven't been here as long as the indigenous people, but <laughs> we've been here for a while. And one of the things is what impression people make on a town. And I don't think anyone has had a greater impression on the town uh, than Noreen Kokoruda, not just within the buildings of education, but outside in fields such as the development of sports teams, the development of uh, camps, the development of swimming facilities. And um, I mean, so Noreen threw herself into everything that was Madison 
And she got heavily involved in all the things that make Madison special, which was a big deal for her. A parent-teacher organization, athletic boosters, substitute teaching. She served on the Beach and Rec Commission. She was elected to serve on the board of selectmen. She was influenced, she was an influential member of the Shoreline Foundation and the scholarship issues that were that were associated with that. She sponsored summer camps. She supported local youth outside the classroom. Education is more than just what happens inside the classroom. She spearheaded the building of the regional swimming pool and supported the construction of the Aquadome, which she got developed tax-free. Uh, she represented Madison as its state rep for the 101st district in the Connecticut General Assembly for over 10 years. And her work focused on, uh, on child care. It focused on education. And it focused on an issue now, which was the town reimbursement and the arm wrestling that always occurred between Hartford and the town of Madison as we began to see uh, the trickle down theory not actually work from Hartford. Uh, she was um, she focused her work in the area that uh, was her passion, which was children. She dealt with um, the areas of autism, both locally and on state and federal levels. Uh, and her, uh, her, her work in that area was highly respected. She was a, an absolute strong fundraiser and she provided computers to autistic children in the community. Uh, none of this made the press, none of this made the papers. It's what drove her to make, make uh, her work with children and Madison children special. Uh, she was involved in charitable fundraising, show houses. Um, the enormity of everything she did uh, made her special uh, and the town will never forget her. In short, um, over her approximately 40 years of contribution, uh, she is a rare commodity reflected in this uh, congressional record from the House of Representatives, read into the congressional record uh, by, um, by Joe Courtney as, a, as an honorary member of people who just do things right, do things special. And I think, um, I think she should be strongly considered for, um, for this honor. And our kids did go to peer advocate through through uh, to the program, so we have a lot of connection. Thank you, Don. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Scott Cochran. I'm a resident of Madison. I'm also the director of Madison Youth and Family Services. And I think it was said earlier, boy, you guys have a really tough job ahead of you. Um, I'd like to uh, put my support behind the naming of the new school for Happy Bowes. Um, I'm the current director of Youth Family Services, and I was a co-worker and a colleague of Taffy's from 2004 uh, up until when she retired from our department in 2015. I'd actually met Taffy when I interned as an undergraduate in 1989, and Taffy was my field supervisor. She had just been hired, uh, so she was also a mentor to me as well. Tabby's list of contributions to the youth uh, of Madison as an educator, an advocate, and a counselor are difficult to fully comprehend and quantify. You can credit her for the sheer number of programs created or the youth she trained, supported, or counseled over 40 years that included work with Madison Public Schools, Youth Services, and then the last few years at Globe School. Her reach extends much further as you factor in that much of her work was to train uh, and support youth to help other youth. And that number expands even more when you include her many personal civic involvements, uh, as well as a multitude of community groups and organizations. The numbers are likely in the tens of thousands when you think about the youth that she, and, and people that she's reached between all the large groups, the classrooms, and the individuals. Uh, rather than to list all her accomplishments and contributions, I just want to share two main points. First, in my, my day job as a director for youth and family, I can tell you that our recent 2023 high school survey, which is a pretty comprehensive survey, it continues to show areas like self-esteem, positive self image and safety continue to drop for females in comparison to males over many survey years. And that this sadly reminds us that there are cultural forces acting on our girls that somehow continue to overshadow our protective factors. We need more and more to provide positive role models for all of our kids and especially our girls. And I feel that it's an important factor that this committee should consider. There are three amazing women nominated uh, 
and Madison would be well would be well served to associate any of their names with the new school. With the new school can come an emphasis on the story of its namesake and a connection made between the students and the school that has a deeper meaning. That brings me to my second point. Taffy stands out to me as she is that she truly embodies the mission of the public schools as a passionate and joyful learner. She approaches all things with a youthful fascination and endless compassion. She's among the wisest and well-informed people that you will ever meet, and while always humble, humorous, and humane. She has always considered herself as a part of a global community and worked tirelessly in both her personal and professional life on issues of diversity and inclusion. Daffy is a consumer and share of knowledge, and she's known for starting almost every conversation that she's had based on what book she is reading or what she's read. Now I can imagine naming the, the naming committee, it will be challenged to sort out a variety of attributes for each of the nominees. For me, I hope the name that you choose is thought of for more than just the honor it will bestow upon the memory or the meaning of its namesake. I hope the name will also tell a story to the students and perhaps the plaque on the wall could maybe read something like this. Welcome to Taffy Bowes Elementary School of Madison. The school is named for Taffy as she is among the brightest stars in our community. Taffy loves to learn as much as she loves to teach and help young people. Taffy raised her own family just around the corner from this school and her career spanned across the community between youth and the public schools and youth and family services. Taffy approaches every day with gratitude and appreciation for life, knowing that we all deserve compassion and caring as we live, learn, and grow. If you are a student, a parent, or a teacher at the Bose Elementary, then you're a part of a school community that can look at life with a sense of awe with equal parts of humor. Thank you for your consideration. And you can't go wrong with me either. <laughs> Good evening, my name is Peter Chorney, I'm the Executive Director of Grove School. Um, I'm also a uh, Daniel Hand alum from class of 91. Um, I live in town currently, 151 Windsor Court. I have two boys who, um, one is still in, at Daniel Hand and one is in college. They all went through all of Taffy Bow's programs, so I'm here to speak on behalf of Taffy. Um, I've had the opportunity as a as a young man when I went to Hand to be part of all of Taffy's programs, started in Peer Advocates, and um, continued basically in every program uh, she put out, uh, mostly because I found them uh, to be a wonderful and inspiring place to be. Um, Taffy's impact on me, I'm going to talk a little bit about personal impact versus all the programs, and because uh, she's done a million things, and I think other people have uh, reflected on those. Um, but when I uh, met Taffy when I was 13, uh, I, it began a journey for me in uh, the helping field. Uh, and it, I speak to that because not only did it impact me in, in terms of my current career um, in helping uh, youth, uh, emotionally disturbed youth, but um, Taffy's impact on many of my peers growing up um, is really extraordinary. There are countless clinicians, um, counselors, people in the helping field who all have a direct link back to Taffy's impact. She's an incredible person. Uh, she's someone who stands out in this community uh, for her values. Uh, she's open, she's wonderful, she's funny. She has every action, positive attribute you can imagine. So I've looked up to her and considered her a mentor in my life. Uh, and it, when she retired from Madison Youth Services in uh, 2015, I had the wonderful opportunity to bring her to Grove. So it really came full circle for me. And her impact at Grove School continues. She's doing what she has always done. Um, she may hobble around a little bit more, but she uh, she has this impact on people, uh, not only our students, but also our, our other clinicians, our other staff. Uh, she is a, a bright light. Uh, she is someone who cares in a way that is hard to describe. Uh, her impact is forever. It's an impact not just from when I was a kid, but it continues on now uh, into the present. So I hope she'll get some consideration. She's really someone who um, this kind of honors to me is what a school should be named after. So it's great to have uh, other name, uh, names that 
uh, are not after people, but when you have a person like Taffy, I can't imagine not any a school out there. Thank you. Thank you. Just before the next person speaks, just as a reminder, if you're joining us via Zoom and you'd like to speak, please use the raise your hand function and I will follow you. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Lisa Nee. I live at 40 Chestnut Hill Road. Um, I raised three sons in the school district. Um, I'm also a board member of Disability Rights Connecticut. And um, I didn't come with any uh, prepared remarks, but I do think we should caution ourselves in naming a school in the 2020s, mid 2020s after a person. I don't think we do that anymore. I think that showing our values, that we value the environment, that we value um, that Madison has continued to protect its open spaces, that the Hammond Acid State Park is in Madison, that we should show that to the youth of Madison that we value our environment, that we take climate change seriously, and that naming it after a person, which many may have um, very valid reasons to be nominated, um, is uh, comes with its own set of issues, um, especially if those are elected officials. So I strongly recommend we do ham and asset. One, it does honor our indigenous people and the land that we're on, but it also honors our future students and the future of Madison in saying loudly with a beautiful school front and center that we value the place and the ground and the environment that we live in. Thank you. Anyone else in person? Nobody on Zoom, so this, this is your moment. I could say something. Go ahead, please. Hi, I'm Nancy Rankin, 8 Morpus Road, Madison. I just, and I have nothing prepared. Um, my husband, Don, has been nominated. I want to tell you that he loved this town. We've been here for 47 years. He's put a lot of time in at Hammond Asset um, teaching. He's a, he's a teacher, a natural born teacher. And that's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> I just, my family and I feel honored that he's been nominated. Well, oh, thank you. I did not come prepared, but, <laughs> but I, um, I'm Sharon Pokerita. I've lived in Madison for 20 some odd years. Um, my mother in law is in um, I live at 23 Alex Drive, Dr. Seda. Um, but um, you all do have a very tough job. Um, and I, I do think that naming a school active individual would be really nice. And Taffy Bowes, I did not know Taffy. Um, I think we're up here. I think when was over here, my husband did. Um, Mary lived here for you know 40, 40 plus years. Um, and the entire time she was here, she served the community, even before she was an elected official. So I understand people's feeling about honoring someone that has been elected, but we'll remind you that elected officials in the town, particularly those that are not first selectmen, are not paid people. They spend their time volunteering to work on behalf of everyone in the community, despite people's differences. Um, so I just wanted to say that. The other thing too is she did not work directly in the school other than her substitution that she did back when the kids were little. Um, but everything that she did for the community directly impacted the students, the community, the people, and the schools. Um, she was definitely involved in starting Night in Hand, which I believe started Peter, I think that was your year. I think that started. Um, so no, she didn't work there, but she was definitely um, heavily involved in getting that up and running, which is super important. Um, the time that I was here with her and my kids being in school, one of her favorite things to do on her own time, whether she was, you know, board of selectmen or working up at the, um, the state in Hartford, um, she loved reading to the students. She always volunteered her time to go to the different schools to, to read. And she just did that because she enjoyed it. She loved connecting with the people. Um, and, 
you know, so I think there's other ways of impacting schools and education outside of directly being an actual teacher in the schools. Um, and I think she would, you know, definitely honor the town and the school if um, if you considered her. But there's clearly a lot of great people. Again, Taffy sounds wonderful. Um, Bob Hale, I knew because I was involved with stuff too. He's a great guy. Um, so, so good luck. <laughs> We have a couple on Zoom, so I'm going to switch over. Beth Scudder, if you want to go ahead and unmute, you're free to talk. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, um, my name is Beth Scudder. I live on Magnolia Drive in Madison, and I would just like to um, put my support. I didn't prepare anything. I was actually driving and had to find a place to pull over after this meeting started. So trying to put my thoughts together in support of Don Rankin. Um, I've lived in town for about 10 years and immediately upon arriving in Madison, I met this force of nature and um, was honored and tried to rise to the challenge of volunteering and keeping up with him and learning from him at every moment and just an extraordinary role model as um, an under the radar public servant, a Renaissance man, a lifelong learner. I can't imagine anyone, anyone else on that list as a, a better um, model for kids and for families about how to interact with your community and how to interact as uh, a learner as an as a student or as an adult um, he was a giver um, with every every ounce of his being and um, I, I would be so honored to be a parent knowing that my kids were in a school with someone like him um, as as a role model and setting a vision for what it would be like to be in the world as a as an adult and a community member. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Bess. Riley Kokoruda, you can go ahead and unmute and comment. Can you hear me? Yes. yes okay. Okay. Uh, my name's Riley Kokoruda. Um, I live at 23 Alex Drive. I, uh, graduated in 2018, so uh, not too long ago, just had my fifth year reunion, which was pretty incredible. Um, but I moved back to Madison, and um, a big part of the reason why I did is because of the impact. Um, so Noreen Kokurda is my grandmother, <laughs> um, but a big part of the reason why I have wanted to move back is just because of the impact um, that she's had on the community and the people. Um, I think when we talk about schools, I think we forget like what schools are meant to be. And I think when it comes to schools, I mean, institutions um, are meant for learning, growth, and progress. Um, and they shape the minds of like a lot of young individuals and they instill them a sense of pride, identity, and purpose. And I think that's something we forget is we, we focus so much on people's credentials and it's so amazing to hear everything that people have done. Um, but just knowing the type of people that um, are shaped as they enter these schools and um, Similar to what the woman said before, I moved back here and I would be honored to send my kids to an elementary named after, uh, sorry, I'm driving, <laughs> named after Noreen Kokoruda. Um, and I know I can go on and on about her. Um, she's had a big, I've been lucky enough to be able to call her my grandmother. And I think my mom made a really good point in a time with such controversy of politics and names, I think it's a time that you, you throw that aside and what did they really do for the community? What were they really there for? Um, and I think my grandma went above and beyond and I think big areas, the disabilities um, with our brother who has autism and I'm heavily focused still and involved in the um, adults with autism. I feel comfortable and honored to be uh, a granddaughter of someone who spoke for people who can't speak for themselves. Um, so, sorry trying to navigate. Um, so I essentially just uh, would love for you to consider her. I'm so happy to hear everyone else's speeches. Um, there's so many amazing people out there and I didn't know a lot. Um, so glad to be a part of this conversation, but thank you. Thank you, Riley. Please, please drive safe. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, Lori Rankin, you can go ahead and unmute and you're free to talk. Great, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear yes. you, thank you. Great. I do agree, it's a very difficult decision. There's some wonderful people that have been nominated. Um, today, I wanted to just very briefly mention that I think diversity is a, a key in naming this new school. Um, and I think that somebody that represents that diversity is Dr. Donald Rankin. I think Don Rankin really epitomizes sort of a, um, a, a diverse, you know, encompassment of, of all different types of people from all different walks of life. He wasn't really a politician per se. Um, he really cared about the environment. He cared about the human spirit, um, his involvement with friends of Ham and Asset, always fundraising, um, you know, helping to create the nature center at Ham and Asset um, to help educate people from our town, our state, and from you know, folks from out of state was really a, a monumental, um, you know, task that he was very sincerely dedicated to. He was a naturalist and really offered his knowledge and education about the environment and, you know, public speaking um, settings that were free at the public library and other places, um, was really embracing of the indigenous people. Um, my children who grew up here, I now live at 56 Bridal Path Lane. Sorry, I was supposed to mention that in the beginning. Um, you know, we're always, you know, being brought to Native American um, type festivities. And, and he brought the Native American um, festivities to Ham and Asset um, for, you know, everybody to learn about. Um, he was also involved with Bower Park. Um, and he was just a, a true philanthropist and lover of people, animals, and he had utmost integrity. So I wasn't really prepared to speak tonight, but I did hear about this last minute and just wanted to say that I think all the wonderful people that have been spoken about, um, Noreen and Taffy and everybody, all, all deserve a vote, but I'm personally speaking on behalf of Donald Rankin. Thank you so much. Thank you. Brett Cucuruta, you can go ahead and unmute. You're free to talk. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Thank you. Um, I'm. Thank you to everyone who showed up here tonight, uh, both online and in person. And thank you to the members of the naming committee for volunteering both your time and your efforts for this project. Uh, my name is Brett Cocoruda. I'm Noreen Cocoruda's oldest son. And I'll try to keep this brief since I know there are likely others who want to speak on behalf of the various nominees. But I wanted to humbly say how honored our entire family is that Noreen's name is even being considered for this project. I know that it would have been particularly meaningful to her that it involved one of the town schools. Her central passion in life was the town of Madison. My mom was not motivated by accolades or applause. She was just as likely to show up and sweep a floor or move some chairs after a fundraising event as she was to give a speech. As a young mother, she was constantly volunteering to help with innumerable causes, worked for a time as a substitute teacher, and was the leader of the PTO. Many of my classmates from that time still remember Noreen's unique brand of enthusiasm and generosity. To this day, I get stopped on the street by Madison residents of all ages who want to share a story of something she did to help them. As many of you know, she was the director of the Shoreline Foundation and oversaw the fundraising and construction of the Aquadome and many of the summer camp programs they ran. My brother Shane, who is a Madison resident as well, and I and I both know, know this, that there was never a day where, the, where we weren't being asked to carry boxes, chairs, baskets, t-shirts, lacrosse sticks, plates, glassware, and anything else you can imagine somewhere for an event she was holding to work towards the improvement of the town. My mom was both inexhaustible as well as exhausting in this regard, and I never quite understood why she did it. Years later, I pressed her on this, and she said something that has stuck with me to this day. She said, whenever I walk into a room, the first thing I ask myself is who could use my help in here? My brother and I both attended hand and played lacrosse, and my mom realized that the girls of the town were lacking a program and saw to it that this injustice was changed. And both my nieces, Riley and Carly, as well as hundreds of other young girls and women have benefited from her insight and work. 
Many of you are familiar with her accomplishments in Hartford and as a selectman, so I won't get into that too much here. But let me say that throughout her time, even in the later years when she was sick, the one thing she would always, and I mean always, make time for was anything related to this town. Even at the very end of her life last December, somehow she managed to join a town meeting the day before her passing. Her service is an inspiration to me personally, to my family, and to many of this community. And I would just like to say in closing that all of the names listed as nominees here are entirely worthy, and I am honored that Noreen's name is among them. Thank you. Thank you. I'll turn it back to the room. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in person? I'll jump up. Please. So not to make this uh, any more difficult for you guys, but so Mr. Um, Mr. Lord was fifth grade Sorry, uh, Alex Robbins, 917 Boston Post Road. Thanks. So Mr. Lord was a fifth grade teacher when I was at Academy and was on the fifth uh, sorry, the third floor, the top floor, and I think he guarded the window out to the top of uh, that floor where your husband, Matt, and I would play. I think it was called Lemonade, where all the balls would end up on the roof, and he was always like a wonderful person. Um, Taffy Bose, I think I went to school with her son, John, if I'm not mistaken, and I remember her recycling cans on the side of the Boston Post Road growing up, so talking, and that was a long time ago, so talking about being, having just courage to, to do what you thought was right. And then Noreen Kokoruda, who I think is just an absolutely wonderful person and encompasses the spirit of Madison uh, in that she spoke up even at her last meeting with her glasses and uh, she was never shy to, to say what she thought. She didn't always take the most um, popular uh, opinions, but fought and, and sort of, we spent time in Hartford with what she understood of, of problems that were statewide and uh, and how Madison related to it and uh, stuck up for Madison. And she, just that spirit to me reminds me of a Madison mom where she was just, she speaks up, she she's not shy, she has something positive to say. And uh, I, I think uh, we're, we're expecting uh, a baby and I would be very happy if they were to go to this school and it's named after Noreen even though all everyone else is truly wonderful here too. So tough decision. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the room? Anyone else online? I have no more hands online. And if no one else in the room has anything additional they'd like to add, um, I'll say on behalf of the committee, thank you all very, very much for coming out. Thank you for everything that you've emailed in. All of the documentation that you have sent to that new school email has been shared with the committee, whether it came in by a hard copy or by email. They got some really large spreadsheets with all of that information in it. So I promise you they have seen all of it. And they really appreciate your input. So thank you very much. Yes, thank you everyone for coming out tonight. Just uh, know the committee's charge is to narrow it down to three to five names to recommend to the Board of Education. And so that would happen in January. And then the plan, I believe, is for February for the board to take, take action. So it's it's been hard for the committee to get down to 15. And I know it's going to be you know, much harder to get down to uh, three to five range. So uh, thank you for, for coming out. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, and um, I call the meeting to a close. Thank you.